Now well, back again. I uh, I got the axle out last night and and split it. Didn't have any real trouble with the bolts or anything, so that all worked out pretty well. But I so split it out. Things as far as the axle goes, I haven't got into the bearings on the outer bearings yet, but uh, nothing was uh, really leaking bad. The driver's side was leaking just a little bit, but it's pretty normal for these things. Brakes are in good shape, but somebody had one on a little cockeyed, and so it was actually rubbing the inside of the drum. You can see a shiny spot. So, um, a minor little fix there. The big problem is just the rear axle. Uh, remember, I talked about those axles. Well, it's just now a matter of getting this thing torn apart. You have to focus here. And I didn't want to focus too well, but that's the passenger side axle. And there's your differential. Now, I, uh, for a workbench here, there's some different things that you kind of need, and one of them is a way to set this axle assembly up so that you can pull it apart without just rolling around on the floor and stuff. So what I did was I took a, uh, it's about a two-inch hole saw here, and I cut a hole through a piece of wood that I clamped on the table and then went on through the table. Don't know if it'll show up. Kind of dark under there. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, that's the other side. That's the driver's side of the axle sticking out here through the bottom of the table. So it makes it easy. That way I can just set this differential right down on the table and uh, work on getting those bolts out of there and take it apart and once I get the part then I'll see what else I might need the uh, those are the inner axle bearings they look a wee bit shiny but um, I don't know I'll go ahead and replace them they're really not that much money and then here's the shims that come out off of each side and they still have the Babbitt shim, and everybody you talk to says, well, if you get anything apart, if you replace anything, replace these Babbitt shims. And um, that other side is nice and round and smooth, but this side is um, disintegrating a little bit, and that's what they say happens to these shims. They, they will uh, disintegrate over the years. They may look good. They may look good like this one over here does. But uh, time and and heat and whatnot I've evidently just uh, makes them come apart. And I did see some pictures of one that was uh, the shims were just nothing but a pile of pieces in the bottom of the differential housing. So we'll certainly replace that. So now I'm going to get it all apart. The spiders do sound a bit noisy, so and a bit rough. Don't know, don't know till I get in and look. Um, but I'll keep you posted on what's uh, what I find. Okay, well I am continuing on this rear end uh, repair rebuild. I just wanted to show you a couple of things. These axles are all... Now, here's the axle over here. It's just uh, kind of hanging piece of it there right now. But I wanted to show you uh, what I'm using here to hold it. Because it's easier to work on them if they're standing uh, straight up and down. So I've just got... A, in a plastic table and I put a piece of wood on here and uh, you know just clamped it down with a couple of cheap clamps but I took and cut 
a, a notch in here and this is about three inches wide and I'm not sure how big that hole is probably I just used the bottom of a of a, a stay lube grease can and traced around it to cut that hole in there and it's high enough that you can actually put the uh, a housing half in there and drop an axle in and you're not going to get it's going to stay off the floor a good a good inch but so here's an axle housing and this is the uh, this is the left side but I want to take it and we'll just put it in the notch yeah we can just set it in there so it's in there not going anywhere and it's a you know, pretty good distance off the floor so it makes it a lot easier to to put it into something like this and you could actually uh, flip it over and drop that other end in there too if you if you had to but the next thing I wanted to show you is it holds it real nice for uh, working on different things. Now one of the things that needs work is the pins that hold the thrust washers from spinning on this on this part of the in fact in, even in the uh, uh, carrier assembly it uses uh, at least one pin on each side to keep the thrust washer from spinning because they really only wanted that center the thrust washer itself to be spinning but it's kind of hard to see I've already replaced or, or not replaced yet but I I pulled out um, two of these pins because they were just the one here was completely worn out and this one's about probably about a third of the way worn out but I wanted to just uh, take a minute and show you how I uh, got these out of here because there's really no way you can uh, grab hold of them and there's no way you can go from the back side and, and knock them out they're, uh, they're a knock-in fit so they're pretty tight but uh, I'm going to explain how I did it I uh, this is sticking up here this is probably the best of all of them the other two that I took out but what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind this down, level or flush with the uh, housing itself. And then I'm going to put a center punch on there. I'm going to center punch that. And then I'm going to drill a small pilot hole. And then I'm going to use a, uh, a, a drill bit and tap this out to a, a 1032 screw size and then I'm going to put that screw in there and I uh, will attach this slide hammer to it and then all you have to do is just gently just bang up on this slide hammer and that pin will give up and it won't stand a chance so anyway that's how I did that so I'm going to go ahead and and uh, get started with it. I'll just show you the I can't hold the phone and do that at the same time so I'm just going to show you uh, the result of each of these steps. All right there's step one it's as you can see the camera I don't really want to cooperate but I have ground that off uh, flush with the housing so next I will center punch it and then I'll uh, drill it out and, and put the tap in it. Alright, I've center punched and drilled the hole and, uh, and now I'm ready to tap. Now for a 1032 tap uh, it requires a number 21 drill bit 
and the uh, nearest equivalent to a number 21 is a uh, 530 seconds. So that's let me go right back over here. There's 530 seconds. So I've got the hole drilled. Now you notice, uh, I noticed when I uh, when I drilled these out that they don't, they're not sunk all the way down to the bottom of that hole. So when you're drilling, you'll actually uh, drill through the bottom of that pin which uh, gives you a good indication that you've gone far enough. It also gives you enough room to get a few threads in there with a uh, tap so that you can yank it out. Okay. don't know if you can see the threads in there or not, but I've gone ahead and, and run a few threads down. You don't have to have a, a lot of thread there. Um, once we screw that screw in there it's yeah, there's no need to, to bang on it very hard to get that to come out it's just a, um, some nice easy taps back on that slide hammer and it the other two anyway just came on out so we'll uh, get that slide hammer in there and then uh, I'll be I'll, I'll tap it out but of course again I can't hold the camera and do that so uh, you'll see it when it's out all right so there it is on the end of that screw and as you can see the hole is now clear so really uh, not much not much at all nice light taps and it just came on out of there so there you have it. That's the easy way to, to get those out. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish uh, cleaning up these pieces and and then we will uh, start the assembly and get this thing adjusted. I've been on YouTube and I uh, have found bits and pieces about going through these rear ends and some information off of some sites. So never done it myself. Might add, I've spent the last 25 years as a computer programmer and an IT uh, manager for a transit company. So um, before that, I was a diesel mechanic. So now I'm uh, back to playing with uh, mechanics. So whatever you see here, just remember. I haven't done it myself until now, so hopefully uh, everything will work out. But I'll uh, take you along with me here as I get it all back together. All right, I have set the uh, backlash for the ring and pinion and uh, pulled it apart again. Uh, safety wired my pinion bolts. There's ten of them, and there's a Got those all safety wired, so they won't be coming loose anytime soon. Uh, safety wired my the three bolts on the uh, carrier here and the differential, and got it all greased up and ready to go uh, back together with the other half over here. Now uh, you'll notice I use silicone. Now the reason for that is, even though I bought a gasket, it's uh, so uh, shrunk and shriveled up that it really wasn't of any use at all. So I'm using silicone. If that doesn't work, then it will come apart again. But uh, for now, we'll see how this uh, turns out. 